Hello, and welcome back. We're going to continue to find strategies for improving skills that work within training. And today we're going to discuss snorkels for improving alignment. Drag kills. So more drag equals less speed. And many small mistakes can lead to big losses in speed. So to reduce drag, athletes need to move straight through the water. And one of the big issues is that where the head goes, the body follows. So if the head goes up, the hips go down. If the head goes side to side, the hips go side to side. And so that can cause a real problem because whenever the body's moving out of alignment, it's going to mean more drag. That's going to mean less speed. And that's no good for everybody. And so the issue is, is that swimmers have to breathe. So the head is necessarily going to come up, and in freestyle, it may very well move to the side. And that can present a problem because swimmers need to navigate that breath in order to minimize the loss of speed that's caused by creating too much drag. So to reduce drag, the impact of the breath must be minimized. And we're going to discuss a strategy for helping swimmers learn how to do that. So what's the challenge in helping swimmers reduce drag when they're taking their breath? While there are some errors that are obviously problematic, Sometimes there's subtle breathing mistakes that can make a big difference in terms of how much speed is lost during the breath. And so the issue is, is that if you can't see those changes, you can't coach them. And if they can't feel those changes, they can't change them. And so that's a big dynamic that we have to manage because a lot of times small errors in alignment caused by breathing can lead to big losses in speed. And because we can't see them and they can't feel them, we can't necessarily use traditional coaching methods to make a change. The other issue with reducing drag in particular is it's about what doesn't happen. And typically, the focus is on what does happen. So it's a total change in mindset in terms of how athletes need to go about thinking what they're trying to do as they move through the water. And that can present a real challenge as well. So we need to take a different approach in terms of how to solve these problems. And the focus needs to be on providing athletes with the opportunities to feel these skills as opposed to think about these skills because they're very subtle and they need to be able to feel them in order to manage them. And if we can help them do so, we're gonna have the opportunity to make a change. One of my favorite strategies for helping swimmers learn to feel these differences, wearing a snorkel. So what do they do? You swim with a snorkel, you swim without a snorkel, and then you repeat. And then the goal, what they're trying to manage, is to have no change in alignment when adding the breath back in. So what they need to do is feel how they gotta go straight through the water when they're wearing the snorkel and when they're not breathing, and they wanna to try to replicate that sensation when they are breathing. So this helps them create awareness of the drag that they're creating when they take the breath. And obviously, if there's zero drag when they have a snorkel, they're not gonna be able to get it down to zero when they take the breath. But if it was at a zero with the snorkel and a 30 without the snorkel, if they can bring that down to a 20 or a 15 or a 10, that's a huge improvement in alignment, and that means there's going to be a huge improvement in speed. So this strategy helps them become aware and helps them feel the drag they're creating when they breathe. And if they can feel it, then they can change it. When using this strategy, the goal is to alternate as much as possible. So you want to alternate between wearing a snorkel and not wearing a snorkel as much as you can so they get more repetitions of feeling the difference between the two. You can also have them use multiple breathing patterns when they take the snorkel off. So you could have them breathe infrequently, you could have them breathe frequently. In the case of freestyle, you can have them breathe bilaterally. The more variation, the more likely they're able to pick up what they're feeling. And again, when they can feel it, they can change it. And this is obviously applicable to freestyle, butterfly, and even breaststroke. It can be really effective there too, because while athletes rarely race without breathing in breaststroke, they can certainly do it in practice, and that's going to change how they feel as they move through the water. So how do you help them continue to learn once they get the basic hang of it? And how do you start to integrate this into training? First, have them go faster. It's going to change when they go faster. They're going to feel different things. They're going to do different things. And it's probably going to be more difficult to reduce the difference between what they feel when they're not wearing a snorkel and what they feel when they're wearing a snorkel. Secondly, add fatigue. So, so any sort of training is going to add some sort of fatigue. One, they're going to feel different things. And two, it's going to be more difficult to execute on what they're trying to do. So that's going to increase their learning, and obviously it's going to help train them as well to be able to execute these skills under pressure. You can use different breathing patterns. Again, by always switching it up, it's going to make it harder for them to lock in on exactly what they're doing. That's going to enhance their learning. You can add resistance. This is going to be more difficult to do this when they're swimming against resistance, regardless of what type it is. You can use weight belts. Why? It's going to pull their hips out of alignment, and that's going to make it more difficult to stay in alignment 
And when they make mistakes with the breath and they have a weight belt on, they're going to get more penalized because the hips are already trying to sink lower. If they take a breath that's not quite perfect or a little bit worse than normal, they're really going to feel that change in their body position. And that's going to make a big impact on how they can address that change in the future. Again, if they can feel it, they can do something about it. Sometimes certain athletes really need to feel a big change in order to become aware of what they're doing. Lastly, shorts have a similar impact. They're going to magnify the impact of the breath on the hips because the hips are going to be riding a little bit lower and there's just going to be a lot more resistance on them. So these are all different strategies which can be used separately or in conjunction with each other so that you can make this simple strategy a lot more effective and you can do it in a training context. So here are simple sets that you can use to implement this idea. These sets can be performed pretty much in any intensity. It doesn't really matter. It's one for each stroke. You, see, you can see how it differs a little bit. And so with the freestyle, they're gonna alternate with the snorkel without. When they take the snorkel off, they're gonna alternate between breathing three, five by 25 and then breathing left, right by 25. So you have a couple different breathing patterns in there to really switch up the feel and challenge them to execute in a little bit different situation. You can do this at a cruise aerobic level. You could do it at an intense aerobic level and you could even go faster than that as well. The goal here is to keep the same stroke count as well, just another added constraint to make things a little bit more interesting. With breaststroke, they're going to alternate between swimming with a snorkel. Now they're going to be perfectly aligned. They're going to alternate with that with breathing every other stroke. So they're going to feel the down and then the up, then the down and then the up, then the down and then the up. The last one, they'll be swimming normally. and They're going to try to maintain as much of that alignment as they can. Build each 25 because as the speed changes, as the rate picks up, it's going to influence what they feel and how they execute. So again, adding a little bit more to get a little bit more learning. Lastly, with butterfly, they go 225 swim with a snorkel, and then they go one where they breathe every other stroke, and then they go one where they breathe every stroke. So they're trying to bridge the gap, and so they, breathing every other stroke is probably going to be a little bit easier to maintain the perfectly horizontal alignment, and then breathing every stroke is going to be a little bit more difficult. However, when you breathe every other stroke, you have to manage breathing up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. You're alternating the skill, which is a little bit tougher. The last one, breathing every stroke, it's easier in the sense that it's just one skill, but it's harder that you're always staying up with the breath. So again, the goal is always to try to make it feel the same regardless of whether they're breathing or not. And the closer they can get to that, the more likely they are to maintain their alignment, reduce their drag, and increase their speed. Hope that helps, and as always, keep it simple.